How's everybody doing? How's everyone doing? Good afternoon to everyone. Good evening. Good evening to everyone. We are live right here, people. We are live at El Chaparral border, where there's a lot of deportees right now. All the way to the back, we're gonna go over there and record for you guys. Uh, there's a lot of deportees, a lot of irregular migrants that just been deported from the United States. We are live at El Chaparral right now. And as we are going to interview Pastor Alberto right now, as he was, uh, as he was confronted by River Doherty again. River Doherty again. We're gonna have a little interview with him. And I'm just waiting here for him to get out of the car. This is really important interview for you guys. Así, uh, Pastor, no se quiere venir para acá abajo. A la sombrita. And I have an interview with him right now and discuss what happened the other day. Here's right here again the pastor. Pastor. How are you? God bless. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you, Pastor. Good, good. How are you doing? Well, we're doing okay. So uh, the reason why you're over here right now, again, is uh, to help uh, people uh, that they are being uh, deported right now from the United States. Uh, yeah, well, uh, some, uh, they get deported and then we come and we take some down to our, our shelter trying to uh, uh, take care of them. Uh, uh, but, you know, all the time there's one problem, another. Uh, like right now, what we're going through uh, this morning, uh, an immigration official a turnover uh, uh, to us uh, two uh, Afro-Americans. And these uh, one of these two Afro-Americans, well, he has uh, TB, tuberculosis, um, in his lung. And then he has uh, a fungus, un hongo, uh, also that's uh, extremely uh, contagious. And um, I had to take him down to the doctor. Is this an African from Cameroon? From Cameroon. So he's, uh, he's an African that came over here. He has a number to, because he wants he to He has a number the uh, for the asylum seeker line. And so, so he went to the immigration official here and said, look, I have here my x-ray, I have this, I need medical treatment, I need you guys to take care of me. So when they were asking for medical treatment and everything, uh, then the uh, immigration official uh, talked to me and said, could you take him and everything? and." He has uh, several problems, so I took him in, and when I took him in, uh, I saw the what the results that he had and everything. I took him to the doctor, so they told me that I can't have him in my shelter because it's contagious. Um, I had to take him, I took him to different places. Atención a la migrante, uh, attention for the uh, immigrant. Then I took him to human rights. Then I had to take him to general hospital. In the general hospital, they took, uh, uh, they saw his exam and everything. And tomorrow he has to go fasting. He's going to be fasting tomorrow. And he has to like get a saliva spit on fasting and put it in a little can. They're going to do a laboratory test. Uh, so um, they saw the exam and they said, yeah, he, he really is uh, bad according to these x-rays. So, um, so they told us that if he's in our shelter, that's a little bit dangerous and that they need to examine everyone in our shelter. Now, the, the, the question here is, Pastor, how many people have been probably infected? Well, basically, you know, on his way up here, you know, this is this is a risk. Well, but basically, uh, they told me they wanted to examine everyone at our shelter. I told them, I received them today, so he hasn't been in contact. So they told me, who has he been in contact with? So I told them, well, all the entire group, over 200. Oh, uh, my God. Here, so they're saying, according to what the exam comes out tomorrow, there's a possibility that, uh, that the health department is going to come down over here to the Chaparral and... Put and everybody examine, on quarantine? No, examine people. I told I told them uh, if they have... that the doctor told me that I shouldn't have them in our shelter because it's contagious. I told them, do you have a place for contagious inside the general hospitals for isolation? They told me uh, they do, but only for people that uh, like spit blood and cannot breathe or something. But for cases like that, they, they don't. So that's uh, that's uh, th that's the problem that uh, uh, we're, we're going right now. 
uh, the problem that uh, tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning, we have to be at the general hospital. We'll find out uh, the results. And then, um, then I came today here to Grupo Beta and to the immigration officials, and I told them, uh, you guys uh, uh, gave me one of these uh, Afro-Americans, uh, immigrant. We took him in, and uh, with the result with the doctor, this is what's happening. So I need to, I need the immigration officials here to uh, have notice and know actually what's what's going on. So pro uh, just for everybody to know that is tuning in, Pastor Alberto came over here to, uh, you know, Chaparral today. They had an issue with a person from Cameroon. Uh, Pastor Alberto took him. Uh, they did a uh, medical exam and uh, he had tuberculosis. He had fungus now on his uh, on his lungs. Uh, 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 he has TB on his lungs. Plus, he has an uh, infection uh, that uh, it's a fungus that they say it's extremely contagious. And he came with the 200 uh, people from Cameroon. So probably the health department is going to come here over here and do a medical exam on all the 200 people from Cameroon. We'll find out tomorrow, uh, according to the results, that at 8 o'clock in the morning, but they told us that that was a possibility, that if he was in our shelter, that they needed to examine everyone in our shelter, but uh, that way we could, we, we, we could not uh, uh, take him in. So basically that's, that's a problem that we're having here at, at the border. It's a health issue that uh, it's very important to, to take, uh, take into account and do follow-up uh, on it. Another thing also, uh, this morning we came and we have come several times and I saw this morning River Jordy. Uh, River Jordy, he's, um, he's one of the uh, extreme uh, extremist uh, activists that come and they have been focusing on unaccompanied minors. They focus, in, uh, they focus on them and they, find, they look for uh, an apartment or places where to keep these underage kids and um, without no regulation or anything, so um, um, he had taken uh, Carlos away from uh, our shelter. He before, was... before you start, I want I want to interrupt you just a little bit for so we can elaborate what happened today with you and River Dorothy. But I want to tell you that a couple of days ago I had an incident with him. I approached him and I was constantly asking him in his face, "What happened to Carlos? What happened to Carlos?" And for three times he answered the same thing. You already know. I told him why you trafficked Carlos to the United States. He's in ICE. Who gave you the authority for you, an American citizen, to be over here and to be carrying minors, first of all? Second of all, you're accused of uh, bringing drugs inside the shelter of Agape, and we have evidence from migrants that they are still in the shelter. They can talk and say that you were the one that he was bringing drugs in the shelter. And also, Pastor, he, I asked him this question, and this is a direct accusation from him to you. He t I told him, I have the evidence of the pastor, and he t told me that pastor is the one that is trafficking people. I told him, the pastor is a good man. You are the one that is trafficking. And he glimpsed in a little laugh. What is your opinion on that? And can you elaborate what happened to you with this attack that he came at you with all these other activists that they're just giving problems to the city of Tijuana and they're taking advantage of the situation of the unaccompanied minors? Well, for, first of all, with, with us, uh, with us it's always like a headache uh, because they're in our shelter. I have DEEF. DEEF goes there, a uh, short and protective agency, and all the minors that we have there, they regulate. We have to give an account of who they are there. So uh, they go there, inspect the kids and everything. Then I have uh, Mexican immigration. They go there and make sure that everyone's legal. If you're not legal and everything, they'll help out so that they could do their legal status. Then I have human rights, human rights from the state, human rights from uh, the federal and Mexico, plus human rights also from the UN, United United uh, this Nations. This is just just this is just to clear this uh, stupid accusation from this uh, ignorant activist. Not not only that, because of uh, our because we went and we did file charges and everything about because we had witnesses and everything of uh, 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 human trafficking and all this that was going on with River Jordy and everything. Um, out of that what came out is uh, we're coordinating together with the, uh, the, uh, the authorities here in Mexico. That's like the DA's office from the state together with uh, specialists and uh, human trafficking, sex 
trafficking, kidnapping, and everything. So in our shelter, uh, they come uh, together with uh, uh, human rights organization here from the state, also uh, Grupo Veta from immigration, uh, also the the one in charge from uh, from kidnapping and sex trafficking and everything. So they give uh, classes to our immigrants for prevention to try to avoid the, uh, these problems. Basically, what uh, in the classes that we have, it's very educational for uh, the immigrants. Mm -hmm. For instance, they're they're saying, okay, there's a problem here in Tijuana border. There's different cartels. So since there's different cartels. Cartels, they want to make sure they have a space where they cross over illegally into the United States. So uh, these cartels, they don't want uh, like polleros or other people using that area because that's where they do all their trafficking. So when uh, the immigrants come and they hire somebody to cross them over like a coyote to the United States, they go try to pass there, but the cartels get mad, and then they start kidnapping people and everything. This is my territory. This is where I cross, and you're gonna. This place is gonna get burned, and we don't want that much supervision on this area. Mm -hmm. So they give them th these kinds of uh, information to the uh, immigrants and everything. And tell them, okay, you need just wait your turn, wait for your number, do it safe, because here by Tijuana border in Baja California. There's a big problem. Now, what is this. your opinion on his accusation to you, Pastor? It is a ridiculous accusation. And also, they, they, he was yelling at me, show me your evidence. Oh, my God. I wanted to show him the evidence right in his face, but I didn't have it on my hand. But he was this accusations to you. Well, uh, I, don't, I, I don't mind. Like today in the morning, I, I saw him here and everything. Then all of a sudden, he sent me one of uh, his partners and everything. He was just right in front of my car, just staring at me, just looking at me and everything. I said, can I help you with something? And no, and then he, they're bringing down like um, uh, Avena. Yeah, the, oatmeal, the oatmeal, oatmeal guy. The oatmeal and giving to the immigrants and everything. So then I started to talk to some of the immigrants and everything. I said, watch out with him. And if you have a minor and everything, you need to watch out with him and everything. Well, he had a fit because I was warning everyone, okay, this is what happened in our shelter. He took a minor without our permission. Uh, and then um, he, we even have a video and even the press was involved when they took him and everything. Uh, everything was recorded and everything. And um, and you gotta watch out with him. And if you have uh, kids, especially if it's on a company minors, watch out, he might be giving you a oatmeal or giving you something, but you need to watch out with your kids. Why, why was not a, a warning? For his arrest, uh, right. the war is not processed. Uh, it, it was not processed. Uh, first of all, the uh, I had another minor that was accusing him directly, and the minor uh, did not have a mom and dad. Since they don't have a mom and dad and everything, um, um, you cannot in Mexico. If you're a minor, you cannot press charges or file a police report. You need a legal guardian. Oh, man. That's, that's one of the, the problems. The uh, the other problem also is there's something that they call fragancia here in Mexico. The, the law of fragancia, that's a fragrance. That means uh, the, the, uh, the police officer has to witness himself the act. It's not just uh, for someone to come to, uh, to accuse someone. Also, um, we had about seven, eight immigrants all together accusing accusing uh, the, the, the coyote, accusing of everything that everyone was all mixed together. And then uh, when they were accusing, when they went down to the police officer, the police officer changes the story. Like you say, somebody bribed the police officer. Probably. And then he comes and when we go down to court, they say, oh, they said they were just causing a disturbance at their place. There's no missing person or, <laughs> or nothing like that. And uh, since uh, the police officer said that, now you need to prove that. Now I need to prove. So um, Mexico, Mexican, uh, the Mexican things, how, it, how the law is here is way different than, uh, than, than in the United States. I will tell you something, Pastor. He's not going to get away again. After what happened yesterday, uh, you know, he knows that he, he, better, he better do things right. Well, this morning I, I, I approached them and everything. I was there, I started filming. Then one of the guys started screaming, screaming, uh, not allowing me to show um, 
River Jordy's face and everything. He was right on my face with another camera blocking me and everything. I recorded it a little bit and everything. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. So I, you I, will, I will really appreciate see, that video, see. Pastor. So uh, basically that that's what happened. I, I felt real bad. Then after that, uh, what I did, I went down to the immigration officials here directly to the boss of immigration here. And I told him, man, you guys need more supervision. This is what happened to us. This is the person. He said, oh, I know who the person is exactly, but I did not know that things like that happen. Well, you guys need to investigate, keep your eyes open and everything, and watch these kids and everything and supervise. So they told me that they, they were going to keep an eye open and everything. And uh, But basically, they don't investigate things like that here at the border. There's uh, too many things going they just, on. They and everything. just water down and they yeah. just don't don't follow with the uh, with the investigation. There's an in intelligence problem here that they don't have intelligence of everything that's going on and everything. And then with what happened a couple of days ago and everything that uh, uh, they accused, they were uh, accusing the immigration officials for bribes. Uh, the uh, the Afro Americans were giving one thousand, one thousand two hundred dollars. To uh, Grupo Veta and also for uh, here immigration to put them in front of the list so that they could cross over. So they gave that money, but uh, the Africans they were saying, "Wait a minute, we have a problem because we're not at the front of the list. We're we're, we're being treated like everyone else, and we're giving money." So basically, that was part of their protest and everything. And the thing is that uh, that same day, uh, the chief of immigration here in and uh, in Baja California, he got fired. He said, I retired. I, you know, I resigned. So it's a big problem. It's a big, big problem. Now the uh, immigration officials here, they said that uh, sometimes there's false documents. And uh, actually the chief of the immigration, they, he showed me a little card. That little card signed. So he said, look, they turned this over. So there's so many things that going on and everything. But the thing is that uh, he did get fired, the, the chief of immigration here. And now I, I believe they, they're putting a brand new one. So it's- So it was so a many. reality, it was happening. Well, it looks like it's it's a reality. Because I talked to the, uh, the chief of immigration that's right now in charge. He told me, no, that's not really that's happening. I said, wait a minute, it's like you guys are shooting yourself right in the foot because they protest, and the same day they protest that this is happening, the, your chief and your boss fire your boss. I mean, from Mexico City, they fire your boss. So, you're in, proving in public, that you're in public proving, opinion, yes. that means it's true. Yes, you're proving that it, everything that is because, a reality. Because the, the press came and interviewed me. I said, what do I think? I said, well, that's what they're saying. They're giving them money. Uh, if it's true, I don't know and everything, but everyone's complaining that they have. And then, uh, because he called my attention, he said, Pastor, you're accusing me. No, I'm not accusing you. I'm saying what everyone has told me, that they have come and gave so, money here. So, Pastor, let me get this right. So, after all the evidence that we have on this guy, man, and on these activists, that they're doing some aiding and abating immigrants, uh, they are, you know, taking the minors without permission. They're American. They don't have a permit to be doing that. They're in another country. What is in their heads that they don't understand that, man? They uh, don't understand that, Pastor. Uh, Oscar, you should know better. Here in Mexico, money talks. Yes, that is the number one you got, thing. You got a lot of money and everything. You could just give officials some money, like what happened here with the immigration. They were giving $1,000, $1,200 to put them on the front of the line. Now everything comes out to light. He gets fired and everything. The same way. Uh, people commit crimes and everything. If you have money, okay, you're out and everything. It's sad to say it, but that's but the Mexican, that's that's the Mexican system. Mm -hmm. So these activists, they have a lot of groups that send them a whole bunch of money. So they know they could get away for, with so many things. That's so the sad. Yeah, it's that's the reality of our country. Pastor, I want to thank you so much. I want that video. If you have it, can you shoot it to me, please? Sure. And uh, also, I want to tell you that uh, whenever you need help with these activists, we will, we will handle it. We already have, you know, we're planning to keep an eye on them and to for them to do things right. So thank you so much, Pastor, for waiting for me. And uh, thank you so much for your explanation. Thank you so much. All right, and thanks. I, I want to ask you, those people, they're all the way to the back. Are they recently deported? Which ones? 
they're all the way to the back, all the way to uh, the entrance of the of the uh, right here of the pedestrian entrance. No, no, no. no. There's there. I do not know if you know, but way, way in the beginning, way back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, actually, it's a building, mm -hmm. and that building, it's right where the fence is at. Mm -hmm. Right, they're next door with with United States wall mm -hmm. and everything. That's a that's a place that they coordinate and um, like el otro lado, um, then um, sin fronteras, pueblos sin fronteras, and everything. That's where they do all their organization, real, uh, protests and everything, organize any protests and everything. That's their, their, their location. That's where they take all the immigrants and organize. Let themselves. me, I'll go take a little walk. Thank you so much, Pastor. Sure. God bless you. And I will see you real soon. Okay. okay? Sure. Thank you so much. Let us take a walk right here, people. Let us take a walk. And that is the reality. These activists still still they don't care they were right here on the next day you see all the way to the back right there you see a lot of people from Cameroon as the pastor was elaborating right now apparently he tried to take uh, one uh, individual that it was from Africa from Cameroon to be exact and he had a tuberculosis issue also he had uh, you know, it, it, it's it, it really a uh, strong fungus in his lungs and he was accompanied by the 200 other people from Cameroon. So the health department probably is going to come over here and, uh, you know, it, it do a health, you know, inspection on all these people that they are probably infected by tuberculosis these are the things that we that i told you guys this about a, a, a two weeks ago that there was a breakout over there by people from cameroon for people from africa in, in tapachula when i was in tapachula i uh carlos explained to us that there was a breakout of tuberculosis by people from africa apparently that is the that is the mo the, the the thing that they're bringing and the sickness that they're bringing over from africa all the way to over here that they have, the majority of them, tuberculosis. Now, you can see all the way to the back, people that they are recently deported. I don't, I'm not going to go over there because there's children. So I'm just going to show you guys right here as they are right there all the way to the back. There's just people that just got recently deported right here from the United States. These are all irregular migrants. Is that is the correct word? All the way to the back. So right now, uh, you know, it, 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 it puts a red, uh, you know, a red alert on how we have to handle ourselves with protection when we are right here in the asylum seeker line. Uh, we need to handle ourselves with real caution regarding the contact with uh, people from Cameroon. Why? Uh, probably, you know, they, a lot of them have tuberculosis. This is the reason why There's, this guy has a really high uh, tuberculosis issue. He has fungus in his lungs and he has a really advanced tuberculosis. Uh, Pastor Alberto tried to take him to his shelter. Uh, they did not take, they allowed him to take him to his shelter. And probably, you know, the health department is gonna come over here and inspection uh, all these people and, you know, take care of all these individuals that they probably are sick. Uh, from Cameroon. So this is the problem. Let's go to where the pastor tells me that, you know, they have a lot of contact with immigrants all the way to the back. And as we are walking right now, I'm just going to show a little glimpse as where they are. And the number one thing, the number one curious thing about it is that we're talking about the same individual, same activist as yesterday, as he, you know, continues with this, you know, assault of words, because he says that he's being harassed over here in Tijuana. That's the number one thing that he's saying. I'm being harassed over here in Tijuana. How you're being harassed over here in my city? How in the hell you 